or Elizadam and Hydromorpha uh, that would be administered. Uh, that will be a call uh, the same as, as uh, we had in, in the Rob Broom case uh, where our team followed the policy exactly as the policy was stated that if they were having trouble uh, gaining uh, and maintaining IV access that they would talk to the ward and the ward would talk to me and then we would sit down and make a decision uh, as to what happened in that particular case. Uh, I chose to ask the governor for a reprieve. If I had the existing method, the new method that I've adopted and, and sanctified and authorized, uh, we would have went to uh, the intermuscular interjection uh, injection of, of the drug. So we believe that uh, this process uh, will uh, work uh, as needed for the state of Ohio. Director, can you just explain one more time? I'm not um, real clear on how just a sedative is going to uh, be killed at first because before the sedative was to, as you said, just kind of put on the sleep so that the other two drugs can take effect. But now we're just going to use a sedative and that's going to to, to perform the, uh, the, the execution. Yes, our experts uh, have said that the massive dose of uh, sedative that we're giving uh, will uh, cause that person to be rendered unconscious and their organs would then uh, stop functioning and eventually they would expire. Uh, and they believe that process to be no uh, longer than what we currently do with, with our drugs. Uh, keep in mind, and, and, and I didn't listen to um, chemistry and physics when I was in school about grams and milligrams and all that, but five grams of five pentol is an extremely high dose. And, and, and I suspect it's in the hundreds of what you would typically get if you were uh, receiving that in some type of operation. In fact, the, the drug that we talk about uh, in the intermuscular uh, interjection, if you've ever had surgery, you've probably had some of those drugs. Uh, the key to that is they want you to wake up. Uh, the amount of drugs that we'll be given uh, would render you not to wake up. Director, the, uh, I'm unfamiliar with those two drugs in the intramuscular. Can you explain how that works and what those drugs do? Uh, basically, uh, again, I'm not a, a, a doctor. Uh, basically, they are uh, used for pain management and sedation. Uh, so if you've ever had surgery, uh, they're commonly used drugs in, in, in surgery. Uh, I'm sure there's other names for them. I, I don't know this. First head, I think, is the name for one again. The lot of is the name for the other, for the other. Uh, but you've probably had them uh, at some point in time if you've had some type of surgery. Director, you were having trouble finding uh, medical professionals to advise on this. Uh, did you ultimately find anyone of the medical profession to advise you? Well, we have uh, Dr. Mark Gershowitz, who is an anesthesiologist, who is an expert. Uh, for all the states uh, in reference to lethal injection. Uh, and, and we have talked to other medical and uh, scientific experts who uh, asked to be and will, will continue to be anonymous, ask them to vet uh, the process. We never ask them to tell us how to do it or any of that. Uh, we propose this process and ask them to vet. We have to talk to the pharmacologists, uh, we talk to anesthesiologists, uh, we talk to uh, PharmDs, coroners, uh, toxicologists, uh, so uh, as staff look at all those things and then brought them back to me, uh, we felt that uh, we had certainly enough expertise, uh, and particularly uh, with that of uh, Dr. Douglas, uh, to uh, make a decision and made the decision to accept the protocol that we have now. And just one follow-up question, do you think that this will make executions more difficult to watch? No, I don't. You don't think that it'll take longer or that any uh, muscle muscle action will happen that isn't happening now? I don't, I don't believe so. Uh, you know, the, the existing protocol we use is by the uh, by pentol. Uh, typically, there's two syringes of that, and, and you see no movement typically by the time we're done uh, shortly after the, the first syringe. Uh, the other drugs, that we would use if we were to go to an intermuscular. Uh, as I said, if you've ever had surgery, uh, I know I've had surgery and they say I'm going to give you something. Next thing I know, I wake up in, in the recovery room. Uh, so they work fast and quick and, 
and that's one of the things that our expert uh, has told us uh, as, as he looked at uh, this for us, uh, the synergenic effect of those two drugs, uh, how fast they would work. Now, of course, there's no, there's no way to know how fast the uptake could be in the, in the inner muscle. It depends on the size of the person and all those other things. But the massive amount of drugs that we're given uh, will certainly uh, do what we're required to do under the statutes of the state of Ohio, which is uh, carry out the lethal injection. Director, on the basically similar to a flu shot uh, into a large muscle, uh, which could possibly be the upper arm, uh, the thigh, uh, the hip. Uh, but one of the questions that, that we asked you know, our expert uh, was, you know, what does this, what would this be similar to? And he said it would be similar to taking a two shot. Director, in making these changes, is there any admission that the previous protocols were unconstitutional or outside of Ohio law? Yeah, absolutely, positively not. Our protocol has been found to be constitutional several times. Uh, our protocol was was basically same and similar to that of Kentucky. Uh, our protocol was same and similar to everybody else in the country who was, who was using lethal injection. Uh, we in Ohio continue to have con continual, continuous litigation. Uh, there is a phrase in, in, uh, in what's in our Constitution or in the Ohio Vice Code that talks about quick and painless. Uh, so everybody seized on that particular uh, opportunity. Uh, in fact, I've been asked on the stand. Why did not go to a one drug protocol? Uh, so I don't think anything that we've done was unconstitutional. In fact, uh, the team and the people who are involved in this process are extremely professional, extremely humane, and carrying out a very difficult job uh, for uh, the fellow citizens of the state of Ohio. Are you just avoiding the threat of litigation then that makes it worth it to go through the process and make these Well, if we, if we can get out of litigation and move forward so that uh, victims don't have to wait for 15 years and then get a stay, or show up at Lucasville and get a stay and have to go back you know, to Cleveland or Cincinnati or wherever. Uh, if it will help that process uh, and still allow us the ability to do uh, the legally obligated job that we in this department have to do, we're certainly willing to do that. And the fact that uh, I know it's been recommended in a couple other states by the experts, I know those states chose not to do it. Uh, I chose to do it. I chose to do it because I'm getting sued either way. Uh, I either sat in court over the existing protocol and argue whether the drugs two and three create pain or don't create pain, or I go with this protocol, which experts have said will work and will do the job that's required under the law. Uh, so I'm hoping that we can move forward. Uh, I, again, have to wait for the courts. And I filed affidavit with the federal court this morning, so we'll wait for the federal court to tell us how to, how to proceed. Uh, but I'm hoping that we can proceed forthwith uh, and, and uh, do the job that, that, that the people in this state uh, have said uh, they want to do. Director, what, let me go back over here and I'll come back. Director, what is, the, what is the actual means of death with uh, midazolam and hydromorphone? Is it, is it the person sedated to the point of death, is a muscle uh, paralyzed so they can't breathe? I mean, what exactly is happening? It, it would be basically the same as uh, you can stop your respiration so if you, you go to sleep uh, and, and, and then your respiration stops. So basically it's the, the effect of either drug is the same, uh, the intravenous pentol or the plasma and so on. Okay.